Hello, my name's Joe Murphy. I'm the co-director on Nose Knife. Uh, we've been in a workshop this week uh, with the brilliant Lisa Doan, who is the performer and co-director on it with me. What is it uh, about these texts that attracted you? Well, Nose Knife is a selection from Text for Nothing, which was um, 13 short stories that Samuel Beckett wrote after his trilogy of novels, his famous trilogy, um, Malloy, Malone Dies and the Unnameable. They're a real exploration into the self into who we are, an identity. Um, and for me, as a woman, um, to be given these ideas today in this environment as an immigrant <laughs> is so exciting. Particularly, you know, Becca was writing these at a time when Europe was trying to understand itself again after the war. And I think the Europe we're in today is grappling to understand itself again. That sort of leads on to the next question about, like, yeah, what is it about Sam, Samuel Beckett's work that attracts you? I mean, you've started to talk about it there, but maybe about when you first got into him and what excited you. And... I, I first discovered Samuel Beckett when I was at home in Ireland, 12 years of age. I remember hearing A. Joe on television and walking in and seeing this haunted man's face with this uh, voice, this ghost-like, viper, relentless a weapon of a voice that Sean Phillips was performing so amazingly. And I've never forgotten it. There's a great boundaryless quality about Beckett. It's very democratic in a lot of ways. An awful lot of people think Beckett's for the intellectuals or the academics. Um, I think Beckett's a lot more visceral and uh, immediate and more guttural than that. And it was when I first got cast years ago 2005 and you know I'm like most people you're sent to script and you see Beckett and you go oh, Jesus <laughs> <laughs> I'm never going to understand this you know I'm going to need some sort of intellectual pickaxe to tackle this impenetrable you know mountain mm. so with the pressure for the audition mounting I just sat down and, and read and what I saw was a transcript of how my mind works. He's also beautiful. I mean, he's above all a stunning poet. Everything is so economical and perfect and perfectly placed. And the humor is so quick and he just turns on his heel and the throwaway lines are just so poignant. And I guess, you know, Beckett's very similar in, in, in Shakespeare in a way, the big kind of fundamental uh, questions he's asking but what I love about Beckett he doesn't try to tidy them off there, there's nothing to sell here you know he's he's not offering a polemic or a PR or a story to entertain us he's simply standing there in all of his confusion um, putting his hand on the wound as you say this is Beckett's prose and we haven't got his you know incredibly normally detailed stage directions yeah. and his visual poetry so we've had to sort of find a visual way into the yeah. to the pieces because Beckett didn't give us those. But the bog has always been such a, ever since we first met, it feels like it's been such a central image for you and such a central point about how the place should be set. Well, one of the key lines is, I am down in the hole, the centuries of dog, centuries of filthy weather, flat on my face on the dark earth, sodden with the creeping saffron waters it slowly drinks. And you don't want to have a too literal interpretation of Beckett's work. Nor do you want to impose too much. I think what I'm trying to do is take his ethos into um, creating the visual and not impose too much. To leave space for the audience to look at these wastelands, these raw wastelands that look like an open wound mm. and examine their own wounds. These are interesting times in Europe about identity and nationality and where would I go if I could go? Who would I be if I could be? What would I say if I had a voice? That's Snow's Knife.